Okay. Uh, this is going to be the next video in the series. I still have to do some work on the device context, so I'm going to postpone the device context uh, video continuation of that video till later time. And this video is going to be about image lists, okay? Because we're going to need the image list for. I'm planning to do a next video about tab windows, okay? So we're going to need some image lists. So let's look at the image list, okay? So before we start here, is that uh, we're going to go over some basics, okay? So the image list, like when you try to create an image list, first thing you you have to basically define this item here. Like it says define underscore win32 underscore IE and then 500. Okay, because it's um, if you don't define this item here, you might get some error messages. Okay, I will show you that. Like, for example, when we go here, let me just here. If we remove this item here, okay, and we try to compile, you're going to get some some structure that's not going to be there for you. Okay, so that's why you're going to get error messages. So you have to include that. Very important that you include that there. All right. Yeah, so here's so let's begin this. So first thing first, so you define this this item here at the very top of your file. Okay. Then you have to include a common control header. And then in the in the win main function, at the very beginning of the win main function, you basically declare an init common control uh, structure, even in init common control ex. So this is the newer version. Okay, so it's common control. This has two fields. Okay, so a common control WD size. So you just basically just put the size of the structure. So it's size of, and then you type in init common control EX. So it tells you, you will basically put the size of the structure. So this is that way the system knows which uh, version of init control you're using. So in the future, if they add more fields to the structure, they can use based on size they will the system will know which structure it's used and then the next item is uh, the uh, basically the uh, uh, how should i put this basically you're telling which classes you want to load so in this case we're going to load the tab classes because tab classes are using the image list uh, functions okay in it when you so when you try to create a tab window it will use image list classes, but that's for the future. So you can use any class that uses image lists, okay? And then you call an init common controls ex, and you pass by reference this this structure, the common control ex structure. You pass it by reference to this function, and what this function will do basically, it's going to initialize. Uh, basically, this function is going to show that the common control thirty two dll is loaded. And the registers and common control classes and registers the common control classes with windows. And basically it specifies which classes are to be loaded. Okay. Yeah, so that's the first step. So that's at the very beginning. So when you try to load anything. So when you other when you try to other windows, like when you try to create tab windows, you're gonna have to declare this item here. Okay, this this is an extra structure. It's a basic one, it's just two fields mainly. And I'm not going to discuss the details because to us at this point they're irrelevant to the image list. But you can look up like the different classes for different uh, windows types, like tabs, uh, you know, like uh, if it, uh, toolbars, you know, and so on. Okay. Yeah. So that's the first step. So now let's move on here. So the functions that we're going to be using is the init 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 common control ex. So which I discussed a few moments ago. Image list underscore create so it's going to create this is going to create an image list for us so you specify the image width image height the flags this initial size of the image list and by how many to grow so because the image list can grow as you add more images to it the load image is basically going to help us load an image from a file so we're not going to load it from, you can load it from either from a resource or file it's going to be loading in our case from a file but it so it takes an instance location of the file uh, the type of file that's to be loaded because this can load a cursor a bitmap an icon then the width of an icon or cursor the height of an icon or cursor and the type of load operation to do 
because we can, we're not going to be using icon, you know, loading icons or cursors. So those, the width and height is going to be both zero for in our case. Image list add. So this is to add an image to the image list. So it's going to take image list handle, a bitmap of the image, and then optional mask, a bitmap with the mask. I'm going to show you how to create that. And then we're going to use image list draw. This is going to take the image list, which image to draw, and the device context to draw the image to, drawing location, X and Y, and the drawing style. OK, so let's let's move on here. So here's the code. So we so the, the previous what I specified here, uh, hold on, there we, this is not the right one here. There we go. What I specified here. Uh, this is goes in the win main function. So the, the init command control ex has to be done at the very beginning. So I recommend that you do it as a, the first thing in win main. OK. The next thing we're going to go to the. The wait here, we're going to go to the uh, main window procedure. And under the uh, message window message create, we're going to call it image list dot create underscore create. And then we're going to specify the type of image list we want to create. So in this case, we're going to be creating a 16 by 16 image list. So what, what does it mean is that the images inside the image list is going to be 16 pixels by 16 pixels for each image there. And uh, the, then the type, the type of image list, the type of bitmap is going to go into the image list. It's going to be the color 24 option. So it's a 24 bit a bit map and then we have the three so initially the list is going to have three bitmaps initially and in case in the future we need it's going to go grow by three by three bit uh, bitmaps so bit images sorry by three images so here's how it looks should here's how you should think of it in windows when you call this function this is what will happen windows will create a bitmap image for you it's going to be one bitmap image that will be able to store three smaller bitmap images of 16 pixel wide and 16 pixel height so it's going to be in our case it's going to be 16 by 48 because we got three images times 16 so that's 48 okay because this bitmap is able to but it's, it's just one bitmap image that is storing three separate bitmap images and that's in windows will create that in memory for itself it will create a handle to that bitmap okay uh, and this is non-masked image, by the way. We're creating a non-masked uh, image list. I will show you in a few moments how to create a masked image list. This is non-masked, yeah. So you have the bitmap handle here. This handle, bitmap handle, goes to what Windows will create when you're creating that, when you're calling that image list create, it's going to create a screen compatible device context. And it's going to load that bitmap into that device context for you. Okay, so it's going to be here. Load it. The, the device context, I think what they're doing is just get DC null so they can the screen device context, the main window. Okay. And that's how they're doing it. So I, I that's my impression. I'm not 100% sure, but that's how I like to think of it. Okay. So yeah, so you have this bitmap image goes to the bitmap handle table. This handle goes into screen compatible device context. This device context handle, this then you're going basically from the, the you have the handle to the device context. This handle for the device context goes to the image list structure. The image list structure here has device context for the image bitmap for the that has the images for the image list, has a device context for the mask, which we are not we, at this time, we haven't created yet the mask, and uh, I will create that for you in a few moments when you look at the mask image list. It has the width, the height, the type, the type of uh, image list it is. Like it's, uh, it shows here that you specify with the color. The the bitmaps are 24 bit bitmaps, and by how many images are actually there, like overall, and how many to grow by. And I added this extra here. I think that that Windows has to have some sort of option to you know to see how many images are actually stored in the image list at some point. So somehow it keeps track. So this is not 
part of this structure, but you need, you need just to think of it that it has some sort of capability to know that you maybe save two images in the list or three images or one image because you can add or remove images okay to the image list and usually i think what happens when you add images it just creates a new bitmap deletes the old bitmap copies i mean creates a new bitmap copies the bitmaps already in the list to a new bitmap and then adds a new a new bitmap to the new bitmap image and then deletes the old bitmap from it. I think that's how they do it, but again, not 100% sure on that front. But anyhow, uh, as far as we are concerned, uh, this is not important to us, how Windows manages addition and deletion of Im images from the image bitmap, okay? From the image list there. So then when, once we have this image list structure, this image list structure memory address goes to another table with the image list handle table. And then this goes back, this handled for the image list at the, here, what we have here. Okay. So yeah, so basically, you know, so when you create that, it's lots of, lots of things are happening in the background. Yeah, so the first thing, you know, you have to think of it that, you know, it creates a bitmap image for you that has, that has the storage capacity, in our case, to store three 16 by 16 bitmap images, but it's empty. Okay, the, then it create, so it creates a handle for it creates a device compatible screen device context, loads the device, the bitmap handle to the device context. And then the device context is loaded into the image list structure. Okay, right here. I mean, the handle is loaded to the structure and then the Windows then creates a handle for the image list structure and reassigns that back to us here. It gives us in the, in the form of a return value, okay? Now that we have that, next step is to load some image. So what we are doing here is basically we are loading an image from file. Okay, so we're loading a bitmap image. The uh, handle to, to the module is null because we are not loading from a resource, we're loading from an actual external image file. And make sure when you, so you specify the, the name of the image file. So in my case, it's image underscore list slash underscore one the bitmap you can call it whatever you like right it's a file external file but make sure you add the file to your project and if it's in a subdirectory or whatever to make sure the path is also included here so in my case it's in the same path as the cpp file so i don't have to include any subdirectories or anything like that uh, the type of image that we are loading is image bitmap because you can load also an image uh, you can load a cursor and an icon okay and if you're loading a cursor icon, this has to be the width and height. In our case, because the bitmap is zero and zero. And yeah, we are loading from file and not from a resource. So we specify that load from file. So what will happen in this case? Windows, again, will load our bitmap here into memory. It's going to create another handle value. Okay. And in our handle table. And then what we need to happen? Let me go next thing. Then we're gonna call image list underscore add. So we're gonna first item here. We're gonna basically uh, create uh, assign the handle that was given to us from the image list underscore create. So we're gonna put here. We're gonna provide the handle to the bitmap image that we just loaded up here. And we don't have in this case we don't have a mask image, so we put null. Okay, so there's no mask. So what this will do basically is going to copy copy the image from the memory address into the image list, basically bitmap. Okay, for us. Okay, so that's how it's going to look here. So we're going to have two two handles, one for the actual image list and one for the image list bitmap, and then we're copying that image bitmap into the image list. So so there are there's one image here, but it has three sub smaller sub images in it. So it's zero, one, and two. So it's zero based index, right? So it's also very important. Okay, so then what happens here? The image list is added. So we have three added images lists in our image list structure. Okay. Now, uh, finally, what needs to happen? We have to delete 
that image list that we just loaded. We have to delete it because there's no point of keeping both images since you know it just takes up space, right? So we call we call delete object and image image bitmap. So basically, we are what we are doing. We're just deleting the bitmap that we just loaded, okay, from our system. So we are only left with an image list. Yeah. Now, okay. And then with, with the way that we draw it here, so we have here that so we have created deleted the object. Now we have to draw it. Okay. So in this case, uh, I mean, this can, the image list can at this point be used to you know pass on to other windows. You know, so for example, if you have like a tab uh, tab window, you can pass image, or you have like a, a toolbar, you also can pass image list, and then we'll use that information to basically draw those icons that you see on the toolbars okay but in, in my case i'm just going to draw it yeah so what will happen here we call begin paint and and within the begin paint and end paint which i haven't discussed yet but i'll go over at some point in the future what it does for us but in this case it's important that you that it just returns the device context and think of it that the begin paint basically prepares the area for drawing that clear, clears the area for drawing, you know, uh, validates the invalid region, and then prepares everything to be drawn. So, and then we call image list underscore draw. So we specify the handle to the image list that we're going to be using the images from. Which image we want to draw? It's zero base, so we're drawing zero. In this case, zero is the very first image in our list, as we have here. Oh, so I don't know. Okay, sorry, as we have here. Okay, so this is zero, the first one, then it's one and two, okay? So, so yeah, so zero, and then device context to which we want to draw to, so the surface that we want to draw on, or the window, basically, to which we know, yeah? And then the location we want to draw that at, so it's in this case 10, 10, so 10 pixels from right, from top and from, uh, from uh, left, uh, bar, uh, borderline, and this is specify what kind of drawing operation you want to perform. So on a must image, on a non must image, sorry, either one of those basically is going to draw the same image same way. ILD image, ILD normal, image list draw normal, and image list draw transparent. So in this case, there is there are a couple more like blending options, but in like if you don't have a mask, though, uh, the, it's not going to help you much here. Okay, so in our case, as you can notice, all three of them have basically doing the same drawing operation. So it doesn't matter which one you choose. It might have maybe there might be some performance issues, but in our case, it's not much relevance here. So if you have non math image, if you select ILD normal or ILD image, it should it should be okay with that either way. Okay. Now let's let's look at the math image here. Uh, okay, so first thing, let's create creating a must image. So what you do, let's say you have this bitmap image here that you created. So you have a bitmap image with three sub images that are 16 by 16. So the, the steps I like to use to create a mask is because in Windows, as you know, when it comes to dithering, so it's in the end, the mask image has to end up as a black and white image. So to, to get there, so what I do first, I color the, the, the background area, which is in, in the original image is white. I color the black, all of it. Then anything that is color, okay, I change it. But you can choose any color you want, right? I chose green just to stand out a little bit. So, and I so basically draw everything, all the other colors into green. Then I change the background color to white and everything that's green to black because what happens you want to make sure that uh, when you do this let's say you like in this case let's say we take uh, uh, this arrow here right arrow some of this you can notice there might be some areas that are uh, white right or something like that so you want to make sure that everything is converted to just that, that you end up just with two colors so right and then you know you go so basically you go from white background green green images and then I put you convert that to the black and you save that file so you so this is going to be the original at the very top your file the original bitmap and then at the bottom is going to be your mask 
and so the, there should be two separate files though, right? So make sure that you know the mask is uh, one file, and then the bitmap is another file. So that's how you that's how I go about creating a mask image. Okay, so now here we're going to create a mask image list. So the first thing, as you notice here in the previous one, we just specified image list color color 24 bitmap. In this case, we have to add an ILC mask also option. Okay, that 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 uh, value has to be there in order for the system to generate our mask image list. And the way it does this is basically instead of creating one bitmap here, it creates two bitmaps for us. One is the color for the, our images, and another one is for the mask. Okay, of the same size. So the, the so what happens is that the bitmap handle table we're going to end up with two bitmap uh, handles, and you're going to end up with two device contexts. Which is, so the system is going to load to one device context uh, the color bitmap, and to another device context the uh, the no the the other one uh, the mask image. Okay, and when it does that. Wait, we are way too far here. Okay, when it does that, it's going to update the device handle table. Then the image list structure that the Windows will create for you is going to have the one the, for the device context for the bitmap and going to have a device handle for the mask. Okay, and everything else is the same. And then so and then it's going to update your uh, the image list handle table and give you the handle. So the the main difference between those two is that in the when you create a mask a image list with a mask, you're gonna get two bitmaps, but you don't have to worry about that anyways, you know, because the windows will handle that for you. In the end, all you have to care about is that the handle the image list. Okay. So that's what you do. So then you load the two images. So after that, you know, loading we are loading here the two images. So they are loaded. So now you have basically pretty much four four bitmap images okay and then uh, let's cover okay four bitmap images and then what happens is that you have to basically uh, image list dot add so you specify the image list and then the first handle is for the bitmap image the second handle is for the bitmap image mask so what this does is going to basically copy the two bitmap images to your to your image list Okay, so they're going to copy the bitmap for the image list and then for the mask as well. And then finally, you're going to have to delete uh, delete those two by calling delete object, edge bitmap image, and edge bitmap image mask. So you have to delete them because, again, there's no point of keeping them around. And yeah, and you, you know, so the first images are, so there are zero base, so the first image in the image list is zero, then it's one, two, and the same applies to the mask. Okay, so they are, they have to be together. So if the if you have a mask image, you have to, to specify both, right? And they have to be consistent. So the first image has to match up with the first mask and so forth. Okay. And then once we have that, okay, once we have that, we have to drawing options. So we can. We're going to the paint message. So here's what happens. It, this is when it comes to mask image list, things are a little bit different because if you notice here, the same thing happens. But if if I say ILD image with a mask image, the drawing is a little bit. It's no longer white background. It came to a like a black black background there. When you draw in ILD normal, it becomes transparent. And when you come ILD transparent, it also becomes transparent. Now, the, I think the LD transparent is used when you're doing some dra dragging operations on the images, which I'm not going to cover in this video. This is just for the this, this is just the basics introduction to image list. Okay, and so yeah, so and normal is basically covering that's basically less taxing, I think. On the, so the main main difference I think between the transparent is that it, LD transparent is used if you're not sure if the background color of the image list can change, right? So for example, if you're dragging this and you're moving from one area of the window to the other where the 
background color can change. I think that's where you should be using ILD transparent because uh, it's more comp it's more computationally more expensive, but ensures that you get the background the same. Okay. And then also uh, what's recommended is that if you know the back uh, background color, right? That and you know that the background color is not going to change. It is recommended that you set you call image list dot set background color. I, in this case, I went for 127, and it's a little bit different. I just wanted for example purposes to show you. But normally, you, you'd set this background color to the background color of whatever the background the image is going to be drawn on, and that will use the, the ILD normal or ILD image, so that's less taxing on the computation of the system. Okay. And then at the very end, when you're done with the image list, under the case VM destroy message, you have to call, you have to basically call image list underscore destroy with the image list handle in order to remove the image list from the system. Okay, because it's dynamically allocated. Yeah, so let's look at the operation in, in the code. So again, so we're defining the win32, i.e. 0500. We have to include include common control here. Then the next step is before I even window class structure is declared, I just at the very top, you know, you declaring basically init common control ex common control. Then you specify the size of which init even uh, control initiation common control uh, structure you're using. Then you specify which classes you want to load. So I'm loading the ICC tab class, okay, which I'm planning to use the tab window. You know, I'm working on it right now to, on the tutorial how to create a tab window. And then you call init common control ex function and ampersand common control in order to basically initialize load the DL library for the common controls and initialize which common controls you want. You know which was going to be used, okay. And then not everything else here is the same. And then you go basically to the window main procedure, okay. So you have you specify the you know variables you know outside any messages and you for variables that have to be available to you you know throughout the program you put them static, okay. So that way they maintain their values throughout. And and here so so what you do here is in the VM create message you first thing you create the list image list dot create here okay you specify the size of the images so yeah I'm creating thirty two by thirty two bit and so for most image like for certain images it's gonna be thirty two by thirty two for others it's gonna be sixteen by sixteen so for example for tab uh, for tab windows I think it's sixteen by sixteen for like a, a toolbar. If you have a toolbar, it, it, like the bigger ones, is 32 by 32 image, right? But you have to I have to look it up just to make sure, right? But you know, but there are different sizes you can specify. Then you load image as uh, from the file. So we are loading with a from a file. So we specify the uh, file name, no resource, the type of image that we are loading, and then zero zero because we're not using any cursor or icon images. So we don't have to specify the width and height here, and we are loading from file. The next step is that basically you have to. It's recommended that you test it. Okay, so if it's you test the edge bitmap list to make sure that you don't have a null. Otherwise, you know, send message that you know couldn't be loaded or something like that. You know, or how to gracefully recover from this. If there's a problem with loading the image. You know how to basically how to recover from it, or whether to exit the program, or to try to reload it, or something like that. But that's up to you what happens there. But it's very it's a good idea to test it just to make sure. So then you load in the mask image at the bottom here. Again, you're testing it. And then you add the image list to the bitmap. So you add image list, add edge image list here. And then bitmap image list and then mask image list is at the end. Again, you're testing it to make sure it's everything was added. And then you're deleting the delete objects, you delete the image list and the delete image list mask here at the very, at the, it's still within the create message. Okay. And then you would paint it here. Those images will be painted here. So I think I think deleted them. So let's, let's see what happens. Here. Yeah, I don't have, 
and then you destroy the image list. So yeah, uh, yeah. So there's nothing here. So let's see here. Uh -huh. Okay, so image list, image list. So we want to draw zero uh, HTC. Okay, so let's say 10. Okay, 10, 10. Draw. Okay. Let's see here, let's compile this thing. Yeah, so it draws this way, you know, let's, let me just, let me just copy and paste it here. The other one's too. So this is gonna be image list one, and then let's say at 60, and then at maybe 110. So ALD normal and ILD transparent. And no, I haven't I haven't set the background color, so let me let me just draw this three here normal. So let's see let's be compiling here. So you see you have those oh, okay shit. Uh, wait, 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 one second. I forgot to change this to two. Okay. Now we compile. So see, so this one is wrong with the background here. And this one is uh, without the backgrounds. Now let me uh, image. Let's see here. Image. Let's So background color here. H. And then R RGB is the macro we're gonna use. Okay, so 128, 128, and 128. And then let's copy here. Copy and paste this stuff here. And then let's say you move by so 80, 80, 80. Okay, we got off. Okay, we got too many, too many arrows here. Let's play before token. Where were we? Ah, too many. There we go. Okay, so like see the, the, the backgrounds here when you said background color, the other ones, you know, uh, they show, stand up there, right? So the normal and image are gonna have this background color while the transparent option is gonna always have, it's gonna be transparent always, but it's more computationally expensive right to do this so if you if you know the background color of this thing or you can compute it right you can get rid of it then you can just specify set the background color so what what the set background color is going to do basically for you is just uh, when you go here it's going to go to the device context because here okay no the previous one not this one hey where did it go Okay. Okay. Yeah. So we're gonna go here and set the background color in the device context. Okay. Here. So that's what's gonna do for you. Okay. So so that's the basics of the image lists, right? So you know those are foundations. I'm gonna leave it at this point. It's not too complicated with the image list. And I'm hoping the next video, hoping to still, I'm still working on the device context. You know because I still have to cover a couple of fields there. 
but uh, I'm hoping to get the tab window up, you know, covered for you. So you have like a tab window tutorial on how to create tabs, you know, in the window. Okay, thank you then.